Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a radical equation. We have x cubed equals square root of x plus 62, and we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting two methods, and the first method will be more straightforward. And let's get started. So first method, I have x cubed equals a radical plus 62. So let's go ahead and isolate the radical because you want to square both sides and get rid of the radicals, right? So that we can turn this into a polynomial. And then the next step would be squaring both sides. And when you square this, it's going to become x. This is going to be x to the 6 power minus 2ab is going to give you 124x cubed plus 62 squared. Okay. Now you might be asking what is 62 squared? I don't know. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply 62 by itself to find out what it is. I think it's going to be 372 and then we're going to get 4483. Okay. So that's supposed to be 3844 if I didn't make any mistakes, right? Hopefully I didn't. And then what we're going to do now is put it all together. And this is going to be a little hexic, I mean hectic, because of the 6th power, right? And if you bring the x over, it's going to be a minus sign, and so on and so forth. Now, even though this is a hexic equation, uh, it's missing a lot of terms. For example, there's no x to the 5th, there's no x to the 4th, there's no x squared, so on and so forth. Does that make it a better equation? Uh, maybe a little bit, but still hard to solve. Why? Because unless you're looking for integer solutions or rational solutions, then you'll be stuck. Uh, for example, if there are any irrational solutions, you can't really find them unless you find some rationals. And for rationals, you would have to look at factors of 3844, which basically are factors of 62 squared. So we can kind of look at it as 62 squared as 2 squared times 31 squared, since 2 and 31 are both primes. This is basically how we can do the prime factorization. And it kind of shows you that there's going to be 3 times 3, which is 9 positive and 9 negative factors or divisors. And uh, all of those are candidates since the leading coefficient is 1. We don't have to worry about dividing by it. But basically, this tells us that if there are any rational solutions, they are going to be integers. All right. Anyways, this is the first approach. And it's going to be inconclusive because this is going to be quite complicated, but definitely you can try uh, some computer algebra system or Wolfram Alpha. Hopefully that'll help you with the solution of something like this. But one thing to keep in mind, if you're squaring or raising to any even power on both sides, then you need to make sure you check the solutions at the end because of extraneous solutions. And in some cases, checking would be really painful, especially imagine you got an irrational solution from here. How would you check that with the original equation? Anyways, that is the first method. I hope you got the idea. This is something you probably wouldn't try. And since this problem is likely to appear on a math contest, then it would actually make sense if it had a quick and nice solution, right? Which we could call, uh, I guess, a shortcut or a maybe a contrived problem. Okay, obviously people who make up these problems, I think in this case that's me, uh, are basically coming up with the strategy beforehand. Uh, and if you don't see that, you're not going to be able to solve it easily. Anyway, so here's the idea. And obviously I just noticed there is a third way to solve it. Maybe I can quickly show you the third method because I want to save the second for last. So let me go ahead and put a little comma here. A uh, little comma, and then I'm going to briefly talk about the third method and then continue with the second method. And the third method is kind of similar to uh, the first, but it avoids extraneous solutions. Okay, that is substitution. I'm going to call this y. You probably know that, right? And if square root of x is equal to y, that means x is equal to y squared. If you raise both sides to the third power, x cubed is going to be y to the sixth power which it also turns it into a hexic equation, but a lot simpler than the original. Look at that. It's so depressed, I mean, in the good sense, right? That it pretty much lost all the powers. And guess what? You could probably guess and check with this, like uh, suppose this can be factored. Again, that would be painful, but think about it. 
looking at factors of 62 would be a lot easier. One thing to keep in mind though, you're solving for y and you have to make sure that because y is equal to square root of x, uh, this needs to be greater than or equal to zero. Since y equals zero is not gonna work, I can just include, uh, not include it. So y equals zero and of course, x should also be zero in this case, right? Because it's being square rooted. Okay, that's the domain pretty much. Under those conditions, you should be able to solve it, obviously, a lot easier than the first method. Let's go back to the second method now, and I'm going to have to rewrite it because I put a comma. So now we have x cubed equals square root of x plus 62. And here comes my favorite method. So we started off with the first, and then went into third, and then now we're doing the second last. Does this make this the third method? No. It's still the second method, okay? Anyways, so to solve this problem, we're going to go ahead and do the following. First, we'll put everything on the same side. Let's do that. And then we're going to make this factorable, right? How? We're going to play with the numbers. We're going to do a little math magic or hocus pocus. Uh, look at the 62. 62 is actually 2 less than a perfect square. And why am I picking a perfect square? Actually, I should say a perfect cube and a perfect square, both. You know what that means? A perfect six power. And that kind of makes sense because uh, imagine uh, you're replacing square root of x with y and we did that, right? That gave us a hexic equation that's six power. So we're looking for something that is perfect six power. But of course, a six power, a perfect six power is already a perfect cube. So it satisfies the equation. I mean, it satisfies my criteria. Why does it, why is it important for that to be a perfect cube? Because I'm going to make a sum or a difference of two cubes. Get the idea? Okay. In this case, it's going to be a difference because 62 is negative. So, I mean, negative 62 is negative, but you get the idea. So I'm going to go ahead and do the following. I'm going to write the negative 62 as negative 64 plus 2. Can I do that? Or some people will subtract 2 and add 2 to the equation, which is basically 0. But hey, it's the same thing, doesn't matter. And then bring the 64 over here. That's my difference of two cubes. You get the idea? Take a look at it. Take a good look, take a picture, okay? And then the rest is gonna follow very nicely because look at that, like, really? Are you sure that's nice? Don't worry, it's gonna be nice. Now let's go ahead and factor this. It's gonna become x minus, not two, x minus four because 64 is four cubed. So I'm gonna write it basically as x cubed minus four cubed, and I use the formula. You know the formula, right? I hope you do. x squared plus four x plus 16, and then minus, this is gonna be just root x minus two. You don't wanna factor that because already, already in the simplest form, very radical, but guess what? This can be factored into two di difference of two squares. Wait a minute, x is not a perfect square. It is in the rational world or irrational world. So you can write it as root x plus two, times root x minus two, that's gonna give you this, right? And then the quadratic, and then one times my radical, and hey, I have a common factor. <laughs> Just, uh-oh, that's not the right, that's not right. Okay, this is the other one. My common factor is gonna be root x minus two, and notice that I can factor it out, and then the rest is gonna be root x plus two, Multiply by x squared plus 4x plus 16 minus 1 equals 0. Okay, great. Now from here we get the following. Root x minus 2 equals 0. Root x equals 2. And x equals 4. The other one is going to be hard to solve. And I think it won't give you any real solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. But before that, I want to show you a graph of the radical and a horizontal line, they intersect at a single point. Uh, I picked this graph because Desmos was kind of out of bounds, was too big, and that's the real solution. Interestingly, we also got from Wolfram Alpha, thank you very much, the complex solutions. How do you get the complex solutions? Probably after dividing this polynomial by x minus four or something like that, you're gonna get the other solution. Because once you have a cortic, you can solve it Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.